Dear friends, I'm Dr. Yasser Rifai from Morocco. I'm very happy to do this presentation about corneal epithelial mapping. Explore in surface to diagnose in depth. So, there is a problem in some cases of postlasic ectasia after normal topography. This, is the, this means that there is a problem in uh, corneal topography to diagnose early stages of keratoconus. Like in this case, where we have normal topography that leads to postlasic ectasia. So we have to ask us about the where is the problem the does the topography uh, is the topography enough to uh, to tell that a cornea is normal or not the epithelium is, is is the superficial layer of the cornea and considering its uniform coating it plays an essential role in maintaining the optical quality of the eye. The role of epithelium is to fill the gaps and try to smoothen the shape of the cornea. If we take this picture, if you want to, to, to measure the height is it from the skin head or from the hair? Naturally, it's from the skin head. The same for this, the, to, to measure the height of this nature. Is it from the top of the trees or from the earth? If we measure from the top of the trees, it's like measuring the cornea with a topographer. It means from the anterior surface, from the epithelium and the, the tear film. But if you measure the epithelium, we will have the reality of the, the, the real topography of the, of the stroma, which is the most important tissue in the cornea because keratoconus is a stromal uh, illness so we can we can measure from the stroma itself and if you take this example here if we measure with a topographer we'll have a steep area here and a flat area here and if we measure with an OCT we will have a flat area here and a steep area here that shows the importance of measuring the epithelium with OCT and doing the subtraction to have the real uh, 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 shape of the stroma. The epithelium behavior is predictable. This is known and used in contact lens in, in uh, orthokeratology. And we know also that the in the peaks of the cones we have uh, we have a thinning of the epithelium and we have a thickening of the epithelium around the peaks so we know that in every keratoconus we will find this image of uh, uh, of, a thi of thinning in the center and thickening around it that we call the donut image The, the epithelium will try to mask the focal stiffening in a normal cornea in a normal cornea we will have an, uh, an homogeneous epithelium but in a keratoconus or an ectasia we will have a thinning in the peaks and we have a thickening around and this epithelium will try to hide the ectasia it will try 
to uh, to to improve the uh, the optical quality of the eye you see here three images with the same image of topography but the reality of the stroma is different in these three cases so we will have his here a defect which is filled by the epithelium you have here a steepening here and you have here a flattening here so in these three shapes three different shapes of stroma you will have only one shape of the epithelial the the, the, the anterior surface that will give us a topography and we'll see here that the topography is really misleading The analysis of epithelial mapping it will show a thinning over the cone, a thickening around the cone, and this image is a criteria in the diagnosis of keratoconus. What is the semiology, the normal semiology of the epithelium? Here we have a normal epithelium and we have a little bit homogeneous epithelium, but there is a difference between the superior part and the inferior part of the cornea and from the temporal and the nasal part. This temporal superior part is a little bit thinnest, thin, thinner than the inferior part because of the movement of the eyelid. The difference between the superior and the inferior part is about 5 microns. In keratoconus or in any ectasia, you will have a thinning in the apex of the cone and uh, a thickening around it and you will have this typical image of donut. So the behavior of the epithelium is thickening over the depression and you have a thinning over the peaks. In histology, in a normal cornea, you see that the epithelium is homogeneous, but in keratoconus, the epithelium is irregular and is uh, uh, thinning uh, in the peaks. There is a thinning here in the peak or the apex of the cone. This is another image that shows the same thing, a thinning in the apex and a thickening around it. So, the epithelium uh, play a role to mask the subclinical keratoconus. I will compare this with accommodation. If we take an eye with plus 6 uh, eye hyperopia, you can, in doing refraction, you can find zero uh, uh, diopters because of the accommodation. But when you, you use the cyclopasia, you will they mask the hypropia so the ciliary muscle contracts in the hypropia to hide it and to make the vision better and the same thing the epithelium will try to mask the keratoconus and when we see the keratoconus in an anterior surface it means that the epithelium is over it means that the, the capacity of masking of the epithelium is over and uh, in some cases the the the, the keratoconus is is uh, too uh, is, is a minimal keratoconus is small keratoconus and the epithelium will try to hide this and sometimes it hides it this case will show us uh, an, a normal anterior surface but you will find a thinning in the apex and it will it, it, it show that that there is probably uh, an, uh, an uh, a subclinical keratoconus that will avoid us that will uh, contraindicate uh, uh, a keratorefractive surgery by LASIK this is maybe one of the cases that had before 
corneal ectasia or the post lazy corneal ectasia because the epithelium was was not studied in the other hand we have in this case in in pentacam we have an asymmetry and we have also in the ms39 is an asymmetry but and with this abnormal indices but in this part of the cornea which is steep the steepest point we have an epithelium uh, 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 we have an, uh, uh, a thickening of the epithelium epithelium hyperplasia and because of this hyperplasia it explains this steep this steep area and it shows that it is a false positive and this, this the thickening of the epithelium in the apex it demonstrates that it is not a keratoconus and it is a false positive and in this case we can go to we can do the kerato refractive procedure in, in PRK or LASIK we will prefer PRK another usage of the 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 uh, mapping, uh, epithelial mapping is to monitor the evolution and the progression of the keratoconus so what we will see we will see the difference between the thinnest point the thinnest point and the most the thickest point thinnest and thickest the difference between them when it will be higher it means that the keratoconus is progressing that's what i called the epithelium delta the delta epith epithelial delta or difference of the thinnest point in the epithelium and the, the thickest point of the epithelium when this this delta is becoming higher it means that the keratoconus is progressing in time we we'll see here a case of an early keratoconus so we have a small thinning of the epithelium here it's a focal epithelial thinning then for a moderate keratoconus we have here an area of uh, a donut image and the difference between the thinnest point and the thickest point is bigger than in this case and this is an advanced keratoconus that shows us a, a, a thinnest point which is thinner than the other cases and the difference the delta between the thinnest and the thickest point is is higher and higher so in comparing the difference between the thinnest and the thickest point we can monitor the progression of the keratoconus and we have some keratoconus with a very thick cornea like these cases with this thinning uh, in the apex We know also that uh, epithelial mapping showed us that corneas have not the same thickness of epithelium. Before, we thought that the cornea, the uh, corneal epithelium is 55 in the center and 65 in the periphery. This is not true because we see differences here. We have uh, a, a around of 55. His, we, here we have 43. Here we have more than 65. So the epithelium is different from an eye to another and this have a, a, an implication in the refractive surgery when we will do uh, uh, a trans epithelial PRK we should know the pit, uh, epithelium before doing the treatment to avoid uh, over or under treatment also this uh, epithelial mapping will help us to do cross-linking to measure the, the stroma uh, uh, and and to know which protocol will we use to each cornea the epithelium will uh, explain us a lot of things about the progression of the visual acuity and the, the visual performance uh, 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 after surgeries after PRK we will see a uh, thickening in the center we will uh, know a lot of things about the regression in treatments and we will see the epithelial remodeling after the usage of intracorneal rings. In conclusion, 
The epithelium is not homogeneous. His behavior is predictable. And it's much, it must be used in keratoconostri screening. And we use the epithelium plus the anterior surface uh, image plus the posterior elevation. We use it in refractive surgery patient selection. It's very helpful to avoid false positives and false negatives. We use it also before cross-linking to know the real thickness of the stroma before doing any protocol and it is used in therapeutic refractive surgery. Thank you very much for your attention.